show me how to choose what's right When my feelings just aren't on my side I know that you help me every time You are the goodness that lights up my life This week, we're talking about a guy who had the perfect chance to give a mean guy some serious payback. Some serious payback. Some serious Was that an echo? Hey, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sanjay. This month, we're talking about how we can trust God to help us do what's best. Whoa. What you got there? My uncle just visited this incredible cave. It's crazy. Just look. Mammoth Cave in Kentucky is the longest cave system in the world, with more than 400 miles of passage. That's farther than driving all the way from Mammoth Cave to Atlanta, Georgia. And then I clicked on this link here. This is Sundown Cave in Vietnam. It's the largest cave in the world. It's so big that trees grow inside parts of it. Hmm, cave trees. Plus, the Waitomo Glowworm Caves in New Zealand. So those lights are? Glowworms. Thousands of bright blue glowworms. Pretty impressive. But you should know that I too know a little something about caves. Really? Care to test it? Let's play it! Welcome to You Don't Know a Cave from a Hole in the Ground. Long name for a game show. Kind of aggressive too. Right? First question is to Skylar. What do you call the activity of exploring a cave? Easy. Spelunking. That is correct. Next question, Sanjay. Are these formations stalactites or stalagmites? Well, a stalagmite has a G in it, which reminds us that it grows up from the ground. But a stalactite has a C in it, as in ceiling. That's where they hang from, so stalactite? That is also correct! Now, it's time for the lighting round! Don't you mean lightning round? Oh, I get it. Lighting round. Okay, here we go! Skylar, this 
flying mammal can often be found sleeping in caves. Bats. Correct. Yes. Sanjay, what type of rock is often found in caves and can be shaped by water over time? Granite. Oh, that's wrong. It's limestone. Back to Skylar. This category of cave-dwelling animal has no eyesight or skin coloring. Spiders? Oh, it's wrong. The answer is troglobites. Okay, Sanjay, the three deepest caves are in Georgia the country, or is it Georgia the state? Georgia the country. That's correct. And now for the tiebreaker. A piece of feldspar has been acted upon by hydrothermal alteration and low-pressure metamorphism. What is the pH level of the resulting kaolinite, and why? That's impossible to answer. Totally! First of all, we would need to know the hydrolysis reaction of the potassium leaching from feldspar's silicate framework, not to mention the status of the aluminum octahedral sheets interleaved with silicon tetrahedral sheets toward forming that phyllosilicate clay. Well done! Good game. And now it's time for... The Story Before the Story! Today, we're in the book of 1 Samuel, where we read about a man named Saul, who was the first king of Israel. But Saul didn't follow God. So, God told the prophet Samuel to anoint David as the next king. When David killed the giant Goliath, Saul welcomed David to the palace to serve him. But as David gained success and popularity, Saul became jealous and tried to kill him. David escaped into the wilderness with a band of outcasts. David lived on the run from Saul for nearly 10 years. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Erica. Even though David had done nothing wrong, Saul refused to give up pursuing him. When Saul heard that David was in the desert of En Gedi, Saul took 3,000 of his best soldiers and led them on the chase. When this guy has a bad idea, he really commits to it, right? When Saul and his men arrived at a place called the Rocky Cliffs of the Wild Goats, Saul needed, let's call it a rest stop. So he went into a cave for a little privacy. But newsflash! This happened to be the very same cave in which David and his friends were hiding. From the darkness of the cave, David could see Saul. But Saul couldn't see him. Golden opportunity, bro. He's right there. Huh? But he's still king. Hey, didn't God say, I will hand your enemy over to you? Then you can deal with him as you want to. Uh. Oh, I don't know. Do you want to be hiding in caves the rest of your life? Huh? David had every reason in the world to hate Saul. First, David already knew he was supposed to be the next king. And second, David had served Saul well. He had never done anything to hurt Saul. And yet Saul was determined to kill him. So what would you do if you had the chance to get even with someone who was mean to you? Here's what happened. Ever so slowly, David crawled towards Saul. He was careful not to make a sound. David inched his way forward until he was 20 feet away, 10 feet away. Saul had no idea his enemy was right behind him. David chose not to hurt Saul. Instead, he simply cut off a piece of Saul's robe as proof that he could have hurt Saul. But when Saul left the cave, David felt sorry for even that one small act against Saul. He followed Saul out of the cave and called out. King Saul, my master, why do you listen when men say David is trying to harm you? Saul turned around. He must have been completely shocked. <laughs> Look at this piece of your robe. I cut off the corner, but I didn't kill you. Who do you think you're chasing? I'm no one important. May the Lord be our judge. May he decide between us and stand up for me. 
Saul realized everything David had said was true. <laughs> you are a better person than I am. You have treated me well even though I've treated you badly. I know for sure that you will be king, so please promise not to hurt my family. David agreed. Saul returned home, while David and his men went to a safe hiding place. Even though Saul was still his enemy, David had peace, knowing he had chosen to stop and trust God, instead of taking payback into his own hands. The end. Wow. Yeah, that could have gone a lot differently. It would have. If David hadn't stopped to think first when Saul showed up. So, what's, what's our, our part, part in the story? story? Well, you're probably not going to run into your worst enemy in a cave anytime soon. But, just like David, you can show self-control when you stop to think first and ask God to help you do what's best. Self-control is about choosing to do what's best, even when you don't want to. Like, if someone's being mean to you at school? Instead of being mean back, stop, take a deep breath, and you can silently ask God to help you in that moment. Maybe you tell them to stop, and then maybe you walk away. And if it's something that has happened before, you can find a trusted grown-up and talk to them about it. Good point. We run into these situations every day where it's important to stop and think first before acting. Like when I think about something funny to say when my teacher's talking. You? No. Definitely stop and think about those consequences. It could be your little brother spills milk all over your homework. Or someone cuts in line. Or you go to grab something at the back of the pantry and you end up dropping 20 things in the process and you just want to lose it and you want to start throwing things and yeah! Domino effect. Yes, exactly. All good times to take a deep breath and think before you act. God can give you the power to show self-control when you ask. And you can look at Jesus too. He had all of the power in the world, even though he could have just done it, just like that. <laughs> You've got it. See y'all next time. Bye. <laughs> so here's the thing. Think before you act. I think I'm gonna check out some more awesome caves. But first, some cave snacks. Rock candy. I love this stuff. <laughs> Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you next time. Time to gear up. Let's go. Crystal Caves in Bermuda. Oh, I really like that. That's kind of cool. Do you think there will be bats?